uh, Kyle. And now for next presentation is from uh, Heidelberg and the uh, DKFZ. Yes, and Klaus Meyerhein will present uh, MITK, this medical imaging uh, toolkit software. Klaus, thank you. <clears throat> yes, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk here and today. My name is Klaus Meyerhein. I'm from Heidelberg. I work at the Department of Medical and Biological Informatics at the German Cancer Research uh, Center. And I am heading the Computational Disease Analysis Group. Um, we built the MITK Diffusion software, which is released every three months. You might know it. Um, it's a QT-based application with uh, many different um, plugins and uh, possibilities to, to um, uh, work with diffusion data. For example, we can go from DICOM over various modeling techniques, uh, including DTI, cue ball imaging, different cue ball reconstruction methods, also IVIM, which is um, intravoxel incoherent motion that allows you to do perfusion measurements using diffusion sequences. Uh, we have a global tractography implemented, which we are quite well known for. We have um, uh, been under the top uh, teams in the last three years of reconstruction challenges at Mikai. Uh, we have a Connectomics um, plugin here, which has won two awards recently. We have uh, synthetic uh, data sets that we can produce interactively using MITK Diffusion. So there's a lot of, a lot of tools in here that you can use to, uh, to work with diffusion data. Um, but when I read the topic of, or the, the, the actual interesting questions uh, in this workshop, I decided to shift uh, a little bit from talking about those diffusion models uh, to rather talk about why do we do this, uh, why do we publish our uh, research as an open source uh, tool, and uh, how do we do it? Maybe to inspire you, how you could do it, and um, maybe to also get some feedback. So one reason <coughs> surely is that we think that we should publish our research as an open source program, and I'm no, I don't know if you are aware of this publication which has been published last year in Nature, which clearly states that anything less than the release of source programs is intolerable for results that depend on computation. So this is obviously one reason why we implement our software as open source. We have a very strict open source policy, so everything that works and is published uh, is put open source in MITK Diffusion or also in MITK. So MITK Diffusion is one flavor of MITK, which is the foundation of MITK Diffusion. Um, but we have other reasons uh, to implement our, a software and a toolkit. And this is, I mean, historically, 10 years ago, our department had about 15 people working there, and we had one room of Windows developers and one room of Unix developers, and we had uh, sometimes the case that a PhD was finished, and he went away, and then he left some source code on his hard disk, and the work was basically lost. So that's when my boss decided, okay, let's, let's make a common platform uh, that we can use uh, for everybody to implement his um, work in this platform. So that's department. Um, a department decision. And um, now, in the meantime, we have a lot of collaboration going on within the research center, for example, with the physics department and the radiology department. And um, the, <laughs> the demands from the physicists are very different as compared to the demands from the radiologists. So, for example, a physicist never wants to implement his stuff in C. He wants to use MATLAB. And um, a radiologist, he wants to have one one-button solution. He wants to have a tool that is running and that he can use directly, that is working. So that, that's very hard to, to combine these, these different views on software. And we have tried to do this and uh, came up with this solution, uh, MITK, which I will 
show you later on how we approach um, this challenge. Also in, a, in this Sonderforschungsbereich, so that's like one of the biggest grants, uh, national grants that you can get in Germany, um, we have several projects in which we collaborate with several other groups, and in the end, um, there will be one piece of software that's supposed to interact with other pieces of software, uh, with uh, other pieces of software from elsewhere, and also with the pieces that the different institutes programmed. So for this special, re uh, special research area, we also have uh, had to make a concept of how, how do we implement our software and how uh, how do we how do we store our data sets and uh, how do we ensure this interoperability. And in the end, of course, there's many collaborators all around the world that try to use and extend our software. So MITK supports interoperability uh, on two levels. So the one level is data, and the second level is code. So about the code, I'll talk about more today. Uh, data, I can say, so we have adapted to many international standards, for example, Nifty and NERD, which is uh, very nice if you use, for example, DTITK or FSL. Uh, you can directly import results from, from those tools and post-process those results in MITK. We also uh, implement DICOM query retrieve to talk to PAX systems. And um, one thing that we have started now in light of the special research area is we have looked at different ways to analyze data that comes from different institutions and that needs to be shared among different institutions. And we um, decided to use XNet to do this. Uh, I want to share this decision with you because I saw that's also very interesting for, for the TVI community. And um, so XNet, we have seen in several talks today, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. We like it because it's very flexible. It has different interfaces. It has a REST interface, which is very nice for programmers. Um, it means that each each image basically can be retrieved by just uh, putting a URL uh, into, the, in, into the data open dialog. Uh, it also has web interfaces and applets for up and download. It uh, supports DICOM query retrieve. And um, it has many things that you would expect from such a system, such as upload, view, search, metadata, and uh, also security and uh, um, the management of access to the data. And it's supported by several toolkits already, for example, Slicer, Nifty View and uh, CTK, which I will talk about later a little bit. So this is data interoperability. But I think even more important is code interoperability. So scientists don't waste time on software architecture. Is that right? So nobody actually wants to do a software architecture. I want to do my algorithm. And uh, I want to implement my algorithm. And I want, uh, Actually, I don't want to know a lot about software uh, architecture, but still my requirements are very demanding. So I want re reusable code, I want interoperable code, I want to collaborate with other people, and in the end I want to have a clinical application that a radiologist can use. So our, our approach to solve this in MITK is uh, component technology. So component technology you can think of as building with Lego. So I really li like this picture because I think it <laughs> kind of visualizes the idea of component technology. So in the end, what we like to have is we would like to have a standard that defines us how does a Lego brick look like. And then if I have a registration algorithm or if I want to implement or if I want to use DTITK, I'm just going to build a Lego br uh, uh, brick that adheres to the standard and then it, the component framework allows me to put those bricks together to form a functioning system. So this platform here is uh, what I want to talk about first. So our solution to come up with such, such a platform is Blueberry. So we have a Blueberry application framework, which is an implementation in C++, that allows you to implement such platforms. So you can think of a platform just as of an empty application. So the idea is, let's build a frame, an empty application, that is able to be filled in with those legal uh, bricks or those plugins that actually form the functioning system in the end. And MITK uses Blueberry um, to build this frame. And uh, we call it the MITK Workbench. So if you want to use MITK as a platform, you can either download MITK Workbench, which is an application that is empty with some 
basic functionality like loading images, and you can fill it in with your own plugins, or you can use Blueberry to, to build your own application, which is very flexible. So you have views, you have editors, and you have very flexible ways to combine these and to interactively uh, also change the design of your application. And MITK Diffusion is nothing else than such a platform that allows plugging in different source code pieces or different plugins. Actually, it's not source code pieces, it's executable units. So you can think of a plugin as a DLL, for example, or as an executable unit. So the Blueberry application framework is similar to the Eclipse rich client platform. I don't know, many of you might, might know Eclipse. Um, and Eclipse builds on a strong standard, which is called OSGI. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying this here just to show you that there are standards out there that are very successful and that are already implemented and defined. So as an imaging community, I think it would be very smart to just look at these standards and to take those standards that allow you to build those Lego bricks and use them to build medical imaging software. And we have done this, we have implemented this this OSGI standard in C++, and that's what we called Blueberry Application Framework. And this allows you now to build applications with, uh, that are built from plugins with lazy loading, so only the stuff that you are actually using is in the memory, with a strong encapsulation and loose coupling, which is important, for example, in science. Um, well, you, already, you always know who, who did it, right? So you have an algorithm, and it's a plugin. It's very nice encapsulated. So you know, OK, this guy implemented this algorithm, and he's in charge. If you have a patent on some algorithm, you can develop a plugin, and you can say, OK, this plugin must be protected, and I'm only going to activate it in cases where I, I'm allowed to do that. And of course, you can reuse and recombine already existing plugins with such, and te such a technology. So Blueberry is written for and included in MITK, but you can also, also use it independently for C++ rich client application development. So the next I want to talk about is those little bricks. And um, those little bricks that we are using are based on the CTK plugin framework. So first of all, what is CTK? CTK is an international inter initiative, which you might have heard of already. Um, Many famous partners are in, in this consortium, uh, UCL, 3D Slicer, Kidware, Siemens, Inria, our group. And um, the goal of this initiative is to build, well, Ranka Kines once said, we go as far as we agree on it, and once we start disagreeing, we go our own path. So CTK is meant to be the part of software that everybody agrees on. For example, a standardized plugin framework, standardized Lego bricks. Maybe the command line modules you might know from Slicer, so that's a very nice way, which I will show you later on, um, to combine different executables to form a functioning system. Widgets, like a level window widget, is something that you don't want to re-implement, or DICOM handling. So this kind of stuff is put into CTK and is published as a library or as a toolkit that everybody can use to build up an application. And the CTK plugin framework, you can think of the definition of how does a legal brick look like and how do I combine it, what's the life cycle of such a brick, and um, so what does the brick have to conform to to be considered a CTK plugin. And um, yeah, so that, that includes the module, how, how does it look like, what's its life cycle, how does it consume, and how does it offer its services. And um, if you talk about uh, component-based software, then you, you always have to talk about interfaces and how do the different pieces of software interact. And those interactions are realized usually in such systems um, by services that different modules can offer, and uh, OSGI um, and CTK plugin mechanism also, they adapt to the publish find bind mechanism, which allows highly dynamic systems and, for example, plug and play um, inclusion of different plugins in the software. So now, just maybe to take, take away the fear uh, for, from people that don't want to waste their time with plugin development. Here, I, I've shown how does such a plugin look like. I mean, 
what you have to do if you implement your own plugin is you just put in your source code in a folder that has a unique name, and you put in some meta information that includes like the name of the plugin, the version of the plugin, the external dependencies, third-party dependencies, and then you are done. And the job of the framework underneath, name it CTK plugin framework, or name it OSGI, the system does the rest of the work. So that's where we want to go. <clears throat> so it's simple and it's non-intrusive. The API, API is very, <clears throat> very small. Uh, it doesn't require any special interfaces. It reduces complexity very much because you only have to think about interfaces now. The internals are hidden. And you have versioning, which means that you can have different versions of an algorithm running in the same system if you want it. So if this is too much, for example, for a physicist that always uses MATLAB and that doesn't want to do some CTK plugin development under C++, we um, adopted the command line interface, which is also a CTK project. So CTK aims at offering a second mechanism to include those plugins into the application by integrating command line programs. So if I like the DTITK registration routine and I only have an executable that performs this registration, I can slightly modify this executable so that it can talk to a CTK application. And the way to go then is the CTK application calls the executable with some magic command line argument, namely minus XML. And then the command line tool returns back its parameters that it needs, that it expects, and its output. And then the, in, in the application, in the end, the images are going to be saved on hard disks. They're going to be processed by the command line tool, and they're going to be read in again by the application. The application is based on the XML. It's going to build its own user interface to let you interact with the command line tool. And in the end, you are not even noticing that you are just using a command line tool. So for the user, it's seamless integration of command line programs. And for the programmer, it's very nice because you can do application development and scripting at the same time using one tool. So examples uh, I've named DTITK registration, ITK-based registration programs, maybe compiled MATLAB code or slicer CLI modules that function in this very same manner. So in summary, MITK is a modular application development, um, offers modular application development at different levels. You can use it as a toolkit, just use the algorithms that it offers. Uh, you can also use it, as a, uh, use it as an application framework and create your own dynamic and extensible application using Blueberry and CTK. And you can also download the workbench, use the workbench, and extend it by writing plugins for this workbench. And as a conclusion, <coughs> I hope I could show you that MITK and MITK Diffusion are a lot more than just a bunch of algorithms, but there's a much uh, stuff going on underneath the hood that might be worth looking at. Um, and uh, I hope I convinced you that those CLI command line modules are a very, a very nice and easy way to adapt your code and to get the visibility through widely applied platforms just by adapting your executable to adhere to this standard. CTK and Blueberry are very nice to do rich plugin-based application development. So if you are into this, you might have a closer look at those. And um, in the end, we hope that through our research, we enable and ease the distribution and reproducibility of research results in diffusion in the diffusion imaging community. So I want to thank Professor Hans-Peter Mainzer, who, is, who leads the Department of Medical and Biological Informatics in Heidelberg. I also want to thank the MITK and CTK platform group, Marco Nolden, Sascha Zelser, who um, do a lot of the platform development. And um, I also want to thank the members of my computational disease analysis group that uh, put a lot of effort in uh, releasing the MITK diffusion software regularly and um, um, that uh, actually do a lot of the work that I've shown here. So. Thank you. That's it. <clears throat>